So I had one more example that I wanted to go over uh, when it comes to finding horizontal and vertical tangents, and that's the cycloid example. So I put the parametric equations of the cycloid on the board with the picture. We're using now a circle of radius r. So r here is just a constant, just some number. And as the circle rotates, as we saw in the previous video, um, it's going to pull out that point on the end of that circle is going to trace out this curve, right? And because it has to go, the circle has to go all the way around, it's, that point is going to come back to the x each 2 pi r. Okay, so each circumference of the circle is going to give you one of these humps. So it kind of looks like you know, what we really expect at the top of the hump does look like there's a horizontal tangent there. And here, it kind of goes down. This one actually looks a little bit better than this one, but more or less it goes down like that. So you're kind of thinking just from the picture that these guys are actually vertical tangents. So let's see how that plays out in the map of the thing. Okay? So remember what we're looking at is dy dx, right? Which is going to be dy dt over dx dt. So if I look at my equations and just take the derivative, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we have r sine t there, because the derivative of 1 is 0, and then on the bottom, I'm going to have r times 1 minus cosine t. Okay, so those r are going to cancel out, and what we end up with is just sine t over 1 minus cosine t. Okay. Fine, right? So dy dx is going to be 0, right? That's the good question. When is dy dx equal 0, right? So the top is equal to 0, all right? When is sine t going to be equal to 0? Sine t is going to be equal to 0 at t being 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc., m pi, right? But we have an issue at the bottom because remember we said for the horizontal tangent, I'm going to write it over here, for a horizontal tangent, we wanted the top to be zero, but the bottom to be non-zero, right? So it was dy dt equals zero, but dx dt is not zero. <clears throat> if I look at this, what happens at even values of pi? At even values of pi, cosine of t, or cosine of n pi, right, cosine of 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, those are all 1, okay? So the bottom is going to be 0, all right? So the top is 0 at every value there, but my bottom, dx dt, which was 1 minus cosine t, and of course I've already canceled out the r, so we don't know about the r, is equal to 0, when cosine t equals 0, well, cosine t equals 1, or t equals 0, 2 pi, etc. So I've got a problem for my odd values, because for my odd values, I, I mean my even values. I have a problem for my even values, because in my even values, I have 0 over 0. I have no problem with my odd values because then I have 0 over 2, so obviously that's 0, okay? So the easy part is noticing that, so the horizontal tangent is going to happen when t is an odd value of pi, pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, etc. So what you have is that t equals, say, 2n minus 1 times pi. Now, at those values, sine t is going to be 0, 
and uh, 1 minus cosine t is going to be 2, right? At all the values, at those values, so I'm going to put it at, so let's put it in. So x equals r times, we'll just call it 2n minus 1 pi minus sine of 2n minus 1 pi. Okay, so this is just 0. So this is just going to be 2n minus 1 pi r. Okay, so my x value is going to be pi r, 3 pi r, 5 pi r, and that's actually what we kind of expected, right? The whole thing goes 2 pi r, this is going to be pi r, 3 pi r, over here, 5 pi r. So right in the middle is the top of that curve where we're going to have a horizontal tangent. Now, what's the y value obviously looks like it's supposed to be 2r. Hopefully you can see this. That does work out, right? Because I've got 1 minus cosine of an odd value of pi. So I have r times 1 minus negative 1. So indeed, I do have the 2r because at that top of the point, remember the circle is turning, and so at that top of the point, that's the top of where the circle is turning, right? Where that point p is at the very top. So that makes a lot of sort of intuitive sense, and the math works out really well. We have to, though, figure out what's going on at these even values of pi 2. Right? And from the picture, we do expect that the even values of pi are going to be a horizontal tangent. But if my math says even values of pi gives me 0 over 0, then I don't know that yet. I have to do more work because 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. Okay? So that's kind of the point of doing this example. Because whenever you come up with a 0 over 0 in this calculation, and it happens not so infrequently with these parametric equations, because you do have horizontal, uh, vertical tangents, and vertical tangents in horizontal tangents aren't always that easy to figure out. Okay? So whenever you have a 0 over 0, it could be a horizontal tangent, it could be a vertical tangent, or it could just be some other number, because... 0 over 0 is indeterminate, and as we've seen doing those limits, you can get whatever you want to get, right? Well, whatever, whatever you're going to get, right? It can be anything. Okay, so our point is the following. Uh, let me rewrite what happens at t equals 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, etc. So we're going to call it 2n pi. Because when I stick that into the dy dx, I'm going to have 0 over 0. Right? So I need to take the limit and see what I'm going to get. If I do get infinity, that means it's a horizontal uh, vertical tangent. If I don't, then I don't. Right? Well, it turns out what we do, we're going to take the limit as t goes to, say, 2m pi of this thing. And I'm taking the limit, I'm using L'Hopital's rule, because, as I said, we've got that 0 over 0 situation. So, sine goes to cosine. Cosine goes, this would be, uh, wait, plus sine t, fine, whatever, okay? But now what's going to happen, this 2n pi, cosine of 2n pi is 1, and sine of 2n pi is 0, right? So this is like 1 over 0, and I hate to write that because that's not anything. Really what this is, is going to infinity, right? So which tells me, so at t, equals 2n pi, we have a vertical tangent. Okay? And so if I figure out what points those are, again, what are we going to get? Get rid of this. 
I better get 2 pi r, 4 pi r, etc. in x, right? So let's see. x at 2m pi is going to be r times 2m pi minus sine of 2m pi. This guy is 0. So this is going to be 2m pi r. And then y at 2m pi is going to be r times 1 minus cosine of that guy. 1 minus 1 is 0, right? So that's actually correct. That, that makes perfect sense with my picture. When I go down 2 pi r, 4 pi r, 6 pi r, I'm going down at a, at a vertical tangent. Okay, so the only time you really need to use what we tell's rule with these is when you have this situation where you've got zero over zero, and then you just don't even know what it's doing. Because there are examples where like it goes to a number, it goes to like pi over three or something, and then you know, okay, it's nine. So you do have to, whenever you see that zero over zero with these um, with these guys, you do have to check it with the limit.